Today we are talking about a topic that I am super, super excited about. Maybe even more excited than about Cthulhu, but that's just because it's been a long time coming and it's been a long time since we've had a significant change in that department. And that is the Ratatoska rework. We'll actually have a jungler that feels new and different for once. This rework is absolutely massive, even though it is only regarding his acorns, but it has impact on his entire kit basically, depending on what acorn you're going for. For this one, I want to thank Daredust, who provided me with this information. There was a smart data mining on that a little bit later as well, but the data mining is not quite as complete as the info that Daredust sent me. I'm not sure why it's slightly different, but I have a complete overview of all the acorns in all their details this way. So that's really cool. So thanks to Daredust for that. In case you are not a Smite veteran, Redatoska used to have a different kit and he used to have four different acorns once upon a time that were relatively imbalanced, especially against each other. And Hyrus wanted to bring these acorns back in a way, but also different in order to keep him balanced. And that's what they've done. And we'll look at the old ones afterwards a little bit to see what has been taken over. But first, let's have a look at the new ones. So the tier 1 acorn, the magic acorn that you have from the start, actually stays exactly the same. It gives you 8% movement speed and replaces boots and can be upgraded. The tier 2 acorn already sees changes. Specifically, it becomes two different acorns. Right now the tier 2 has 10 physical power and 10% movement speed for 700 gold. We don't have the gold prices of the new acorns yet, but I am fairly certain that the tier 2 will be a little bit more expensive. I would guess around 1000 gold. And that's because both tier 2s actually come with more stats. One of them is the Nettle Acorn. The Nettle Acorn comes with 20 physical power instead of 10, and it also comes with the 10% movement speed increase. Along with that, it also comes with plus 5% physical power. So I'm guessing this is a percentage that's just applied to your power as a whole, so the more power you're building, the more effective this becomes. The other Acorn is the Lively Acorn. This one also comes with 20 physical power, 10% movement speed, and also a passive. When Ratatoska deals damage with an ability, he restores 1.5% of his maximum health. I think this will be around a thousand gold or maybe a little bit more, because these effects are relatively strong at the start of the game, and they probably don't want you to be able to run one of these along with a blessing right from the start, so I'm assuming these will be more expensive in return for the better stats. You may also notice from this that when it comes to the start of the game, one acorn of these is clearly better than the other. In the start of the game you will only have your acorn as your damaging item, as your power item. So the 5% physical power increase translates to exactly one power. Getting healed for every single ability obviously sounds like the better choice here. But that is because the tier 3s are also significantly different. I'm expecting a price change here as well. And that means you will carry the tier 2 longer. So you're kind of making a sacrifice if you're going for one of the acorns in order to get a tier 3 that will be more effective for your build later on. At the moment, the tier 3 acorn is only 900 gold, which is why you can basically rush it almost at the start of the game. The total cost from tier 1 to tier 3 is only 1,600 gold. That used to be different. The old acorns had a total price of 2,300 gold for the tier 3. So you would have to save up quite a while longer to get them in the first place. And I'm expecting around similar price ranges here, maybe a little bit less this time, but I'm thinking that the effects are a bit too strong to be that accessible that early on. Now let's look at the four acorns that we're getting. The first one is the Bristlebush acorn. This one comes with 40 physical power, as all of them do by the way, so compared to the old acorn you actually lose 10 physical power, 20% movement speed, that remains the same, and it also has a plus 5% physical power, which means it'll build from the nettle acorn. And now we're getting to the new effect, it gets 10% critical strike chance. Now you may be thinking, why would you want critical strike on Rare Tusker? He's not really a god that benefits much from crit. Well, that's where the new passive comes in. Dart now passes through enemies and can critically strike. Each enemy Red Tusker dashes through increases his movement speed by 10% for 4 seconds. This effect can stack up to 3 times. This is actually in many ways a throwback because Red Tusker used to be able to dash through enemies with his dash at all times which is something that I personally always preferred as a mechanic. It felt better in my opinion. 
and he also used to be able to crit with his dash with the right build. Now we're not fully getting that effect back because back then he could also have lightning effects from the opal icon at the same time making it easier to hit multiple targets and Ritoska could also dash multiple times. It sounds a little bit interesting that this effect can stack up to three times. It makes it sound like you could dash multiple times almost, but I don't think that will be the case. I don't think there will be a rework where you have multiple dashes again, but rather you have to hit three enemies with the same dash in order to get this effect or get the maximum out of this effect of 30% movement speed, which honestly sounds rather hard to do considering the dash is not that wide anymore. On the other hand, crit is a lot more accessible now than it was back then, a lot cheaper for the most part, and there are a lot more items that could be interesting here. For example, you could dash through enemies with Wind Demon or with Poison Star on you to get further benefits or to slow the enemies on the way. You could have Malice to weave in your abilities better and everything. So there's plenty you can do with a dash here in general and plenty that makes this more interesting than it was maybe back then if it was only a single dash. But I gotta stop my excitement here because we actually have three more acorns to look at. The next one is Thistle Thorn Acorn. Again, 40 physical power, 20% movement speed. This one comes with 10% physical power instead of 5%, so if you build a lot of power you can get a fair bit out of that. It's still not insane most of the time, I think, so if you had 300 power, this would be 30 extra power, but it's a nice little boost. The passive effect in this case is enemies hit by Acorn Blast are now debuffed, taking 5% additional damage from Ratuska's abilities, stacking up to 3 times. Acorn Blast now fires 5 Acorns. So from what I understand here, this means that a single Acorn Blast will now fire 5 Acorn projectiles and that each projectile that hits an enemy applies this debuff. So if you hit 3, which would be enough for the stun, then you should already apply the full effect of 15% additional damage. So this one is the Acorn you'd clearly take if you're just after the highest ability damage possible. It's especially interesting because you have a damage increase from the 3, but you also have protection reduction from the 2, meaning the damage will be incredibly amplified. The question for me here is, how exactly does the effect apply to itself? So if I hit an enemy with a single Acorn and then the second one hits, is that already amplified by 5% and is the third one that hits already amplified by 10% then? And if the Acorns are all together, if it's 5 and they are in the same cone as now, then will the additional Acorns, if they also hit, deal even more damage? If the answer to all of that is yes, I would say this sounds relatively strong. The problem that I could potentially see is that in many situations, the Acorn Blast is not necessarily what you would use first. You would often use the two beforehand in order to reduce the protections and deal more damage with your other abilities. So it would feel a little bit counterproductive maybe. And likewise, you might be using the one first to engage on the enemy, to dash on the enemy. Likewise, you often engage with the ultimate and don't use it to finish an enemy off that often. Another question here is how long this effect sticks to the enemy, because if this is something that lasts for a long time, this could potentially be relatively strong in solo lane where you have extended boxing as opposed to jungling where you'd usually be roaming around while not using it too often on the same target in a row. So a lot of variables that could make this stronger or weaker compared to the first acorn that's a bit more straightforward. The third acorn is the evergreen acorn. This one again, 40 physical power, 20% movement speed, but it also comes with 10% extra maximum health. Very unusual. When Renatoska deals damage with an ability, he restores 3% of his maximum health and mana, so twice as much as the tier 2. Obviously, this is also further amplified by the fact that he has more maximum health as well. To put this into a little bit more perspective, at the moment the tier 3 Acorn heals you for 15 plus 15% 15 of your physical power. So if you had 200 power, for example, then it would heal you for 45. On the other hand, with the new Acorn, if you had 3000 HP, so a relatively HP focused build, but not too heavy, especially with the 10% that he gets anyways, then the same ability usage would heal you for 90, so double that. In return, you're obviously sacrificing all the other benefits that you could get from the other Acorn, so this is a very, very interesting one for a very interesting playstyle. Maybe some, I don't know, support Red Tusker could go with this? At the same time, you have to keep in mind that this one also is the only one that restores mana as well, the same amount. So that is something that could be useful just to spam your abilities more essentially. 
The last one is the Thick Bark Acorn. This comes with 40 physical power as well and 20% movement speed and also comes with plus 10% protections. Lots of percentage increases in all of these, but this one is uh, very interesting overall as well in how it works. The passive is, when Red Tusker deals damage with an ability, he restores 1.5% of his maximum health, so like the tier 2. But also, Flurry now provides protections equal to the protection shred from enemy guards. Flurry gains an additional charge. And this one is incredibly interesting to me depending on the specifics. Right now, Flurry reduces protections by 6 on max rank per tick of it, up to a total of 24 protections. So that would give you 24 protections as well. But you get an extra charge of the ability, which also means you deal the damage twice. The question is what happens when you use the second ability to the protection reduction? Do you apply it again on top of the other one, which would be up to 48 protection reduction, which sounds pretty crazy, or is it just once? And do you get the protections again, regardless of if it's applied or not? Do you get a total of 48 protections? Also, are the protections just physical or magical too? And also, do those protections benefit from the additional protection that you get through the item itself, or are they calculated afterwards? It seems likely they would actually be factored in, because it would synergize within the acorn itself. Also, if you hit multiple enemies, does it take the protections from all of them and give them all to you separately? Because it sounds like that, and if it does, that sounds like a job for only Hunter's Gabra at Tusker, just dashing in the middle of enemies and hammering out the flurries just to get a ton of protections. And last but not least, we again don't know how long the duration of this effect will be, so that is a major factor in how useful it will be as well. But overall, I think this makes for a very interesting choice of Rare Tusker solo, because you could now go into this, get your sustain that way as well, get Glad Shield along with it, steal tons of protections from the enemies, be really good at boxing, be really good at sustaining, and yeah, just have a good time in solo compared to what he had before. And different from the enemy, you don't even have to go back to get the full acorn. I really like these new acorns and I think they are probably easier to balance than the old ones, even though some of them seem stronger than others, especially the last one just has so much going in terms of protection, but then also gets more damage through two flurries. So not quite sure if that's really that evened out yet, if that's the final form yet. But I do think they will be more manageable to balance than the old ones. Things that we didn't get back from the old ones are the lightning effect that you could get on your dart. We're also not getting back the potential to stun with the dart, as the Topaz Acorn used to. We still somewhat have the Emerald Acorn effect, because we just have heal across multiple abilities. And we'll not see the sticky acorns back, which allow you to stick the acorns onto enemies and then have them detonate after a few seconds. Different from the old acorns, I think the new ones encourage way more varied playstyles depending on which build path you go down. So I think the new versions are actually more interesting, even though I will always miss the old version of Flurry of Acorns, which I think was a lot cooler in combination with the dash. We don't know when the rework will actually be released, but considering that Hyrus has announced massive things coming with the next patch, I am guessing that we'll likely see it in the next patch, along with potentially the low-key rework as well, and apparently also possibly with the Ares remodel. Nothing set in stone here, not sure if all of that is coming out in the mid-season patch, but it seems like that would be the plan based on what we're hearing so far. I'm super excited for this rework and it definitely makes me want to play Red Tusker more. Let me know how you guys feel in the comments. And with that, thank you guys very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the sub button and maybe the bell so you get notified of upcoming videos. We have a lot of Cthulhu stuff and of other new info this week, so there's going to be a lot to talk about. See you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.